I'm not going to name any names, partly because, as King points out, this is something that all of us deal with. And I had no one in mind there. So. <laughs> but let me rush on to my main point this morning. Today's scripture readings are stories about being called, about being called to serve and to follow. They're stories about being called to serve God, to serve that which is sacred in the world, and to follow Jesus, to follow that voice which calls us upward toward wholeness, toward the common good, toward that dream of the kingdom of God made real in our lives and in our world. These stories echo many others in our scripture, and all of them are intended to make sure we know that we are called just as Samuel and Philip and all of the other disciples once were. We are called as they were. You are called as they were. Called toward wholeness in our lives. Called to seek wholeness for our neighbors. Called to follow God's dream for our world into new ways of living and being. And this, this is exciting if you hear the call that's there in these passages today. This is exciting because it's not about something that happened long ago. And it's not about something that's going to happen after we die. It's about our lives now and our world now. We are called, you are called, to be bearers of God's dream for our world in our own time, just as they were then Samuel and Philip, Hannah and Mary, Rosa and Martin, you and I. And what does it mean to be called? Once there was a graduate student who came to his mentor, the great Howard Thurman, to ask him what he ought to do with his life. And Howard Thurman was a remarkable man, an African-American pastor and teacher, theologian and civil rights leader, who served as a mentor to many leaders of the civil rights movement, including Martin Luther King Jr. Anyway, this graduate student came to him asking what to do with his life, and Thurman replied in an unexpected way for a civil rights leader. Don't ask yourself what the world needs, he said. Ask yourself what makes you come alive. And go do that. Because what the world needs is people who have come alive. What the world needs is people who have come alive. More than anything else, when the voice comes to us on the evening breeze or in our dreams or in the cries of our neighbors across the globe, when the voice comes to us, we are called to come alive. To come alive like Samuel and Philip, like Anna and Mary, like Rosa and Martin. And on one level, this calling is about what we might do in our lives, what career we might choose, what path we might take in life. It's about our passions and gifts and abilities. But I think Howard Thurman also meant it in a different way. I think the question of what makes us come alive also has to do with how we live our lives, whatever path we may be on. How do we harness that drum major instinct? How do we view the purpose of our lives? Do we live to be above others or to serve others? Do we to satisfy ourselves alone or to be generous toward all, to share the abundance of our lives with others? To be first in power or to be first in love, as King said? Ultimately, what makes us come truly alive is not about ourselves alone. The systems that oppress our neighbors in Knoxville, Tennessee, or Ferguson, Missouri, in Latin America, or Africa, and Myanmar, or Korea, the systems that are, that are destroying the life of our planet, those systems also oppress us. As King said, injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. And not only that, any social system that is based on power over others, on excluding others, dehumanizing others, out-competing others for resources, place everyone in the system on notice, declaring to us that we have no intrinsic value outside of our ability to compete, to defeat, and to dominate others. It's that mindset and all the ways that mindset is institutionalized in our world that imprisons us. And it imprisons all of us, no matter where we may rank in the system. Like the old joke said, even if you win the rat race, you're still a rat. So. 
Is life really meant to be a rat race? I don't think so. The voice still speaks, declaring an alternative truth to us. We can live our lives in ways that both give us meaning and begin to transform our world from a place of bondage and division, violence and inequity, into a place of real freedom and fairness.